In this video, we're going to talk about where Jenkins stores archived artifacts. You may have wondered where Jenkins stores the artifacts when you use the archive the artifacts post build action in a freestyle job, or you use the archive artifacts step in a pipeline job. Well, that's the great thing about Jenkins. Everything is file-based. It's just a matter of knowing where those files live. In this video, we're going to take a look under the hood to see where the artifacts live, and we'll also take a look at an option for storing artifacts somewhere else other than on your Jenkins controller. Here's where we're starting today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.1, and I also have an agent attached to this controller. Down in the description of this video, there is a link to a gist that will have links to all of the documentation and any sample code that we use. So let's go ahead and get started. I have an example pipeline and it's on the gist. And that gist is right here. I'm going to make a copy of this pipeline. And before we go and create the job, what I want you to see is it's just pipeline agent any. So we'll be using that agent that's attached to the controller. I've set a handful of options. You can choose to do that or not do that. And it really boils down to just two stages. I have a stage to where I am creating a text file, and then I am archiving that file just by passing in an ant base pattern match for .txt. So let's go create our pipeline job and see what happens. So we're going to call this archive, whoops, Archive Artifacts. Pipeline, click OK. And we're just going to paste it in for this. Let's go ahead and click on Save. And then click on Build Now. What we'll see here, that will run pretty quick. We go in, we create our Hello World, and then we archive our artifacts. Pretty simple, right? We created a file and we archived it. Let's click on the number one in the breadcrumb, and we can see here that build artifacts are listed here. And if we click on hello text, we can see here that it's hello world. That's what we put into that hello text file. Take a look at the URL. We can see here that it's referencing job archive artifacts. That's the name of the job that we created. There's one, that's our build number, artifact, and then hello.txt. So that's where the file actually lives. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. If we go back up to the top of our job, so we're out of the build number, we can also see here that the last successful artifacts are listed here at the top. And then again, it's hello text. And if we click on hello text, we can see here that it says last successful build. And what's happening is it's just pointing down to the last build number, which in our case was build one. Now, just to prove this out, let's go ahead and flip over to our shell. And I'm inside of my controller. And if I take a look at where I'm at, I'm inside of my Jenkins Home jobs directory. So if I type tree, which I've installed on this machine, then what I can see here is I have my archive artifacts job, builds, here's number one, there's an archive directory, and then here is our hello.txt file. And if I was to cat out archive artifacts builds one and archive and then hello text, we're going to see that it's hello world. So this is where the archived artifact lives. It lives under the build number that it was created inside of. Now, the file I just created is only 12 bytes. So I'm not really concerned about the storage of 12 bytes extra on my Jenkins controller. But what happens when more and more jobs start archiving their artifacts? That means your Jenkins controller is potentially being turned into a binary repository. If your Jenkins users are using archive artifacts on purpose in their jobs in order to store the files on the Jenkins controller to act as a binary repository, they really instead should be using a real binary repository, such as JFrog's Artifactory or Sonotype's Nexus repository. But what if you don't have a binary repository available to you right now, but 
you do have access to either AWS S3 or an S3 compatible storage provider. There is a plugin named Artifact Manager for S3 that allows you to store your artifacts in an S3 bucket. The great news about this, it's completely transparent to both your Jenkins controller and to your jobs. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller and install that plugin. So let's go back to Manage Jenkins, back here to the top, Manage Jenkins, and then Manage Plugins, Available. I'm going to look for Artifact Manager on S3. So I'm going to select that, click on Download Now and Install After Restart. And now that we've logged back in, let's go ahead and verify that everything installed fine, which it appears to have done. So Manage Plugins, Installed, Artifact Manager on S3. Yep, all there, ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our job. Actually, before we go to the job, we have to do some configurations for that plugin. Let's take a quick look at the documentation for the plugin. And it can be found on plugins.jenkins.io. And the prerequisites that you're going to need are you're going to need an S3 bucket, and you're going to need an account that has access to that S3 bucket. And it sort of makes sense, right? If we're gonna be storing files inside of S3, well, we need an S3 bucket. We need credentials to be able to connect to that S3 bucket. Before I started recording, I set up a user inside of AWS, and then I applied a policy to that user. I also have an S3 bucket set up. Let's take a look at the policy because usually that's the biggest confusion point. And this is also in the gist. So what I have is a very basic policy. My name of the bucket is depope-jenkins-archive-artifacts. By the time you're seeing this, that bucket's already been deleted, so nothing to see there. That bucket is completely private though. It is not a public bucket. I have three different sections here. I have one so I can actually find the bucket. That's that part. And then once I get to the bucket, then I have a list just on the bucket level. And then once I'm actually inside the bucket, the slash star, then I can put get and delete. So again, I've already set up a user inside of AWS. I have credentials from that user, a key and a secret. I've applied this policy to that user. And then I have the bucket already existing because I'm referencing the bucket already here in the policy. And before we go ahead and configure the plugin, let's take a quick look at the bucket just to prove that there is nothing in the bucket as I'm recording this. So I will close this up to make it a little bit bigger. No objects inside of the Deep Hope Jenkins Archive Artifacts bucket. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get that plugin configured so all the magic can happen. Let's go to our controller. So let's go to Manage Jenkins, Configure System. Let's go down to Artifact Management for Builds, click on Add, select Cloud Artifact Storage. And you're going to see here the only option we have is Amazon S3. So either you're using actually Amazon S3 or you're using an S3 compatible provider. But first we have to set up our settings. So let's go ahead and click on this link. That'll open up a new tab. Our bucket name is going to be whatever my bucket is. Let me go grab this. Whoops, wrong tab. We also have this option for base prefix. By default, it comes in blank and artifacts will be stored in the root folder of the S3 bucket if it's blank. If I was to put in a new base name, let's say top folder slash, then everything that goes into the bucket would go under that top folder slash directory, if you will. Now, I'm gonna leave this blank so that way everything goes into root. These next two options are deleting artifacts and deleting stashes and it doesn't really make sense until you take a look at the help. These work similarly that it requires a dash D parameter for when the controller starts up. So I can't just check the box and then click save. 
I actually have to set this during, in my case, the startup of my Jenkins controller. I prefer to have these checked because I want my artifacts deleted from S3 when the build is deleted from my controller. That's my preference. Same thing with stashes. But I don't have that currently set up on my controller, so we're just going to ignore these for now. Close that one and close that one. We don't need to set a custom endpoint or custom signing region. These are if you're using a compatible S3 provider. So again, since we're using AWS S3 for real, we don't need to set those. And we also do not need to set these other settings here. Now, I do need to set credentials. So I'm going to go ahead and set my credentials to US East. You could leave it auto, but I tend to set it to where I know I'm going. And I need to add a credential. So I'm gonna click on add. I'm gonna change my kind of credential to AWS credentials. I'm going to set this to archive artifacts, just for the ID, it's sort of weird, but hey, it's okay. My access key is over here. And my secret is here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on, oh, before I click on it, we can see here the credentials are valid, but do not have access to the Amazon EC2 service. When I set up my policy, if you think back to the policy, it had nothing to do with EC2, only S3. So I know the credentials are valid, but it can't get to EC2. I'm okay with that because I know I didn't set it up. Let's click on add. So I know my credential is good, but before I leave this, I need to select that credential. Now you'll notice there's a validate S3 bucket configuration here. Before we click on that, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then the way you get back to that AWS configuration is right here. I'll take you back to this panel. I'm gonna go down to my validate S3 configuration. And if it's successful, then it says success. If it is not successful at this point, your policy may be incorrect, your credentials may be incorrect, or your bucket may be incorrect. Those are the three things you would need to look for. So you either created an incorrect credential, maybe you put a space on the front or back or something else, so you have a bad credential. You may have accidentally typed an incorrect bucket name. That's a possibility. Or the policy that you created, which is right here in my case, was not correct either. So those would be the three places you would go and look. Until you get to the point to where you have success, do not move on from this point. Okay, so now that you're at success, let's go ahead and go back over to our job. And you know what? I'm gonna stay on the page for a second. I'm just gonna click save. Good enough. Let's go back to our job, archive artifacts. Now, I have not made any changes to this job. Just to prove it, let's take a look at the configuration. I just still have my SH and I have my archive artifacts, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Exact same job that we ran in the first run. So I'm gonna go here, but I forgot one thing. Let's go back and do one more change. We'll go back to dashboard, manage Jenkins, configure system. So we had everything configured for AWS, but what I need to do now is go back here to the artifacts section and actually add it because I could not add it until it was configured. Again, Amazon S3, that's the only option. And now we can click on save. So at this point, we can go ahead and go back over to our job and click on build now. Let's watch what happens here. Build two, again, Echo hello world. Look what happened here when we archived the artifact. It said uploaded one artifact to, and it gives me an S3 URL. Depot Jenkins archive artifacts, right? That's my bucket name. And then I see archive artifacts and then two and then artifacts. Well, this was build number two. So if I click on build two, and we can see here that our hello text is 
being hosted at S3, which is what we wanted. So now let's go back here. Let's go back to the very top. Again, last successful artifact. If I click on Hello Text, we're going to see that it goes ahead and redirects back over to S3. Let's go back over to our shell on the controller. And we are in our jobs directory. Let's just type tree again. Let's see what happens this time. In build one, we had an archive directory, hello text. But with build two, there is no archive directory. So now let's go back over to S3 and see what happens. So we can see Depope Jenkins Archive Artifacts. We have Archive Artifacts, that's our job name. We see two, that's the build number. We have Artifacts, and then inside of that, we have hello.txt. So should you really use Archive Artifacts? The short answer is no, as long as you have access to a binary repository. Said a different way, your Jenkins controller should never be used as a binary repository. Why is that? As a Jenkins administrator, the last thing you want to do is bog down your Jenkins controller with excessive network traffic with people pulling files from your Jenkins controller, especially if those files are very large files. As a Jenkins user, you want to be able to provide metadata around your artifacts and binary repositories such as Artifactory and Nexus repository are purpose-built to provide that to you. However, if you don't have a binary repository available to you right now and you need to use archive artifacts, then go ahead and get your artifacts moving to S3 or an S3 compatible storage provider. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available from CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.